Good morning, everybody. It's time for another quick garden update. Really, really early on a Sunday morning uh, because it's quiet again. I was intending to do this next update earlier in June, but it's been so incredibly hot here that not much has been happening. Once the temperatures reach a really, a really high uh, point around the, the 90s, things stop growing. So, <laughs> yeah, that was a thing. Um, it's been a bit cooler and things are kind of progressing. So let me show you stuff pretty quickly. Um, this is my herb garden, which I didn't go over last time. It's got weedy again. You can see all the Bermuda grass. I have a little rosemary plant down here which is not really taking off probably once again because I planted it right before it got super hot. I have a tiny little lavender. Everything's being choked out by this Bermuda grass, sorry. I swear I've actually cleaned this out once, but <laughs> not, not, not during June. Um, this poor little lavender has been suffering and I don't know what's wrong with it. You can see um, some of the ends have been clipped off by something, but I cannot figure out what would be eating it. So it's still alive, but not doing well. Everything else is exploding though. This is the oregano. I have an oregano with very big leaves. There is another type that has smaller leaves and I'm trying to find one because this is really pretty. It's really, really pretty and it's huge, but it doesn't have as much flavor as the oregano with smaller leaves. This is the thyme. It's mostly done flowering, so it looks a bit brown on top, but it is also absolutely gorgeous. It's more Bermuda grass. Um, this is the sage. I need to get in here and cut some of this stuff off so it looks better, but it came back really well this year. I really chopped it back last summer, and so it's not as big this year, but it was getting a bit, a bit too big last year. Um, more Bermuda grass. This is the really sprawling tarragon, which I keep saying I'm going to rip up and give and give it back to my mom because I never use it and it just gets overrun by the Bermuda grass every year. And this is the blackberry lily. Um, I think I have a new one this year. I think I have, let's see, I think I have about four plants now and I only transplanted two. It hasn't bloomed yet, but it will eventually. So now on to the garden proper. So here's tomato bed number one. This is where the peas used to be, and you can see the green plastic trellis I was using. I ripped up the peas about two weeks ago. They did really well, and I remember to take a small video of what they looked like right before I pulled them up. Uh, they got really to the top of the trellis. This was almost exactly the height that I wanted it to be, so I was really happy about that. Um, and now the tomatoes are here. These two are opalca. They're very small. Um, they've only just started um, getting bigger in the last couple of days, in fact, when it's been a bit cooler. I have some marigolds over here. I had marigolds last year, and these are self-seeding. These are the shallots. You can see we're getting close to them being harvested because they're popping up um, above ground. They're looking really nice. I'm not sure how big they're supposed to be because I've never grown shallots and I've certainly never grown this variety before, but they look they're doing really well given the rocky start they had. These are weedy onions. And these are the ones that I started myself and they're a little bit behind the others. You can tell when uh, onions are getting close to being harvested because the tops fall over. These are still kind of sticking up but they, um, they're getting a little brown on the tips, so you can see. Not too bad. These aren't as big as I thought they would be, but the ones in the other bed um, are looking better. So let's go and look at those. Oh, first, this is the purple kale that I didn't show on my last video because <laughs> I couldn't get it to start. This is my third attempt to get them to start, and they finally did. Looking pretty nice. Um, I think they're really beautiful. It doesn't really stay purple when you cook it, but it's really pretty right now. Given the really hot temperatures, it's it's done well, and I'll have to blanch it when I put it up uh, to get rid of some of the bitterness. The spinach used to be in this bed, which is now six bell peppers. They are also pretty small, 
but you can see we have some flowers and little little tiny uh, bell peppers on a few of them yeah they're doing a lot better now need a bit more rain a bit more water I probably had to take off more um, so yeah I had spinach in here I'll plant some more in the fall because I just didn't have enough I I used bed space for onions instead huh <laughs> look at all those weeds moving on from what's actually still in the garden uh, these are the second plot of onions which um, are doing better they're much bigger you can see that is a lot bigger than the one I showed you over another bed these are the ones that my dad started and gave me a flat of his seedlings and they just they've always been a bit bigger I think that they're like a week or two ahead of the others and you can see they have fallen over so probably right on time for 4th of July I will be pulling these up I was gonna weed these yesterday but I thought I'm going to be pulling them up so soon, it doesn't matter anymore right now. This is my Brussels sprouts. Um, I'm not going to get Brussels sprouts. It did not work out the way I thought it was going to. But if you go down here, those are Brussels sprouts. I'm sure that with the hot weather, these are absolutely disgusting, so I'm not going to eat them. Um, my mom said I should probably try these in the, the fall because she's thought of them as fall crop instead, and that would give it... A longer period of cool weather so I'll probably do that I just need to pull these up but I'm honestly fascinated at watching the little Brussels sprouts pop out um, more tomatoes that's why I need to pull the Brussels sprouts up because they're kind of crowding the tomatoes so little Roma another Roma you can see there's a little tomato on there and then the final two tomatoes are over here um, I need to get out here with string and pull these up. You can see there are bigger ones down there. These are the zebra stripe tomatoes. I've never grown them before. Every year I pick a new variety of tomato to grow. Last year I did black brandy wine, which are pretty cool, but um, had a slightly funky aftertaste that I didn't like very much. So they were still really good and they grew so well, but I figure I might like this variety a bit better. Um, I mentioned before that I wanted to put up a permanent trellis, and you see I haven't done that. Um, I'll be doing that next year because the trellis I want to put up, it uses this rebar uh, grid that's a certain size, and I'm going to have to pull out my frames and then chop off a portion to make it narrower, and I figure I would just do that... Um, in the fall because I want to rotate my tomato beds anyway so if I'm gonna pull up the frames and move them I will do I will make them smaller and fit the rebar uh, when I do that so I will just resolve myself to use string this year for the tomatoes uh, we'll make it work and these are the garlic you can see they're also getting crispy these are a bit farther along I think um, you can also see I did not cut off garlic scapes this year, so that's why you have these really scary looking flowers. I should cut these off. Um, I never let garlic scapes grow out all the way, so I was curious. Some people say that if you let them grow, if you don't cut them off, then um, the garlic is smaller or it doesn't taste as good or something. I don't necessarily believe that, but I guess I'm going to have an experiment this year to see if that's true or not. They look really good this year. Whoa, that's a really tall garlic scape. The garlic is going to be replaced with green beans, or I may do green beans in the beds that I had the onions in because I need to rotate them. I keep putting green beans here every year and I need to rotate things a bit better. So yeah, I'll probably put spinach in these beds, green beans in the two onion beds, and when the kale and the shallots come up, I don't know what I'm going to do then. I did forget to plant basil, so I should probably do that today. That is the garden in full summer swing. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will talk to you again later.